Tonight's top stories from the unit website include EU and South Asia scrap over recycling ships. We just can't afford the welfare bill for Eurozone migrants. Is the Eurozone crisis set to flare up? European Union says Kenya has 1.9 million child labourers, plus a request for waiver of the parliamentary immunity of Alexander Alvaro. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, a European effort to bar the use of potentially hazardous ship recyclers in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh has run aground, stalled by an outcry from the South Asian countries. The proposed legislation would bar ships flying European Union flags from beaching old vessels, that is, steaming them onto shore where they are dismantled by hand at informal shipyards. The low-cost ship scrapping industry in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh is a multi-billion dollar business employing about a million workers. And the three countries account for more than 70% of the global ship recycling industry. The European Parliament has approved measures that would ban beaching and fine EU ship owners for violations. Now, I'm not convinced that this will be an effective deterrent for ship owners. Secondly... What will the one million workers in Asia do to earn a living? And thirdly, do our super bright elite not see a pattern emerging here? Such a move will simply see a new ship breaking operation start up in somewhere like South Africa or South America. Once hailed as the unique engine of growth, the euro has brought only mass unemployment, poverty, indebtedness and the collapse of democracy. This month, the jobless rate in the broken Eurozone reached 12.2%, though in some of the member countries the figures are much higher. So in bankrupt Spain, once portrayed as a shining example of EU-led progress, 27% of adults are unemployed. The numbers are even more shocking for young people, with a quarter of those under 25 throughout the Eurozone now out of work. In effect, an entire generation has been sacrificed on the altar of a hopelessly flawed Europhile ideology. Now, this is a key must-read article that drills down quickly to the facts about the state of the nation, Europe and the UK. Now, in this article, Lance Roberts writes... I have written in the past that all is not solved in the Eurozone. In fact, despite the ongoing jawboning from the ECB that they stand ready to do anything, in reality they have done little to this point other than just talk. Whilst that has worked to a large degree to suppress rising interest rates on debt-burdened Eurozone countries, there has been no progress on the unification of the Eurozone or a resolution to its burgeoning debt problems. At the end of February, I wrote, Get ready for a run to all-time highs, wherein it I stated. My guess, as I have been discussing for the past four months, is that by the end of the summer the Eurozone crisis will be back. The recent elections in Italy and the subsequent curtailment of austerity clashes with the goals and plans set forth by the ECB last year. Furthermore, the German elections may also prove disastrous to the ECB plan if Angela Merkel is unseated. Now, I can vouch for the predictions in Lance's article. Regular watchers of my nightly news will recall my predictions earlier this year that the next country to career into the fiscal abyss would be Ireland. Well, I have links below for your attention. The Irish Independent has released tapes from 2008 showing the Irish Prime Minister and Chief Executive Officer of Anglo-Irish Bank colluding to draw and lock in the Irish government into carrying the heavy losses as the bank collapsed in 2008. So, what's going on here? Well, these senior figures are being set up like straw men. You see, our US sources revealed earlier this year that Anglo-Irish still has massive, unfunded debt obligations on its bond book. And furthermore, its creditors' book is double-subscribed. I believe that the reveal of these tapes is to prepare these people as targets. And as the investigation uncovers the extent of the bank's unfunded debt, these figures will be stood up to take the bullet. 
So, what's the time frame? Well, my prediction is that Ireland's economy will implode on the back of an Anglish Anglo Irish bank collapse before the end of October this year. There are 1.9 million child labourers in Kenya. The number, according to the European Union, accounts for 17% of minors in the country, with the majority aged just between 5 and 17 years. Agriculture sector has been identified as the leading employer of miners in Kenya, followed by the domestic sector. Now, according to the EU, 82% of the domestics are girls from rural areas working in urban centres. This emerged during the World Day Against Child Labour. The Cologne Public Prosecutor has requested that the parliamentary immunity of Mr Alvaro should be waived such that investigations into his involvement, particularly whether or not he could have avoided the accident, can be carried out. Mr Alvaro, who our archives reveal was involved in battling against ACTA legislation, was involved in a road traffic accident which resulted in the death of one person and serious injuries sustained by three further people, including Mr Alvaro himself. The Cologne Public Prosecutor's Office in Germany wants to begin an investigation against Mr Alvaro as he is liable to prosecution for involuntary manslaughter under Section 222 of the German Criminal Code and for causing bodily harm by negligence under Section 229 of the German Criminal Code. Uh, frankly, it strikes me as rather Stalinist to have in place legal immunity from prosecution for MEPs. In the first instance, it's an insult to the rest of us, and secondly, it actively encourages them to take additional risks. And let's face it, the Bureau kleptocrats don't need any encouragement in that department. Today in our video library, now I have external links for you which will take you to the Irish Independent where you can listen to the full Anglo-Irish recordings. Be prepared, much of the language is explicit and frankly quite shocking to hear such senior figures talking in this manner. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>